Welcome back to a brand new Army 3D Beginners Tutorial. Now today I want to talk about how to actually use the logic nodes for actions such as animations, rotation or scaling an object inside of Army 3D. Now all of these nodes are going to be uh, following up from the input tutorial that I just made uh, which is essentially going to trigger these actions. And once we have those triggers we need the actions and that's what this video is all about. So first we want to do is create a new node tree hosted on this object. So the object is what's going to have all of these nodes containing it. So let's go ahead and add the army traits and select a new node tree, press new node tree and make a new name for it. Now make sure the first letter is a capital letter. If not armory is not going to be able to uh, forgive you and it's going to spit out loads of errors and uh, it's not going to be very nice. But it doesn't actually influence on the functionality of your game but it's always best to not have errors shown up in your face. So let's just call it move with a capital M and now we can select that new logic, logic node that we just made, this new um, uh, node tree that we just made. Now we can go ahead and select our input type which is going to be our keyboard input. Now when we have our keyboard space pressed down we want an action to occur. We want something to happen and that something is going to be a movement. So let's go ahead to the movement area here which contains animations, nav meshes, uh, transforms and physics and let's focus on the transform. The transform contains many different ways to move and change an object's location or its look. So let's go ahead and talk about well, the first one right here which is the scale. We can set an object scale right here and uh, right now there are a bunch of things happening. Uh, the first thing is obviously the output of the um, input of the input socket. It's, it's a bit wordy. The output of the input needs to go into the input of the action if you're following. Uh, it seems very obvious to do so yeah. Uh, now we need to define what object we want to uh, influence on, we, what object we want the animation to be applied to. Now we don't necessarily need to tell the object uh, in question that he is the one that needs to be uh, um, influenced by this action because we already defined him to be the owner of this entire node tree. And so if we leave it blank, by default it's going to look at who is the owner, it's going to find it's the cube, and so every action that we tell it to do, it's going to be the cube that is going to do those actions because he's the owner of the logic node tree. Now we don't need to actually set the scale uh, of each axis individually, we can actually just grab all of these and move them. But yes, these are all individual axes, for example the uh, X and Y and Z axes can be influenced individually by using different um, values. Uh, now we don't actually need the scale node, instead let's go ahead and look at the rotation node. So down here we have a bunch of rotation possibilities. The main ones are the set object rotation and the rotate object. Now the set object rotation is a good node to actually move an object uh, for example 90 degrees. However, it's not going to have a nice transition from its base animation, its base location, its base uh, rotation, and it's not going to actually have a nice transition from that all the way to what you tell it to move at. Now, the set object rotation isn't the best node to use in all cases. The, be the uh, set object rotation is going to essentially directly move the object from its base position, from its base location and it's going to set it to the rotation that you define instantaneously, meaning there is no transition from one frame it's going to go from normal to whatever you set it to be, as in if you want to rotate it 90 degrees. So here, for example you just plug that in and you want to rotate it 90 degrees on the, X, on the Z axis like that, it's going to instantaneously rotate it 90 degrees. However, that isn't the, always the best way to rotate an object because you might want a smooth transition from point A to point B. So by using the rotate object instead of the set object rotation, right here the rotate object, 
we're able to trans transition from the base position, which is currently this one, all the way to whatever position we want. So it's basically going to rotate the object at a certain speed continuously. For example, if we set it to 1, you'll notice that it doesn't just rotate it a single time when you press space, it just continuously rotates it with the speed of 1. Now we do also have one last node to talk about and that is the location node. Well actually we have a bit more to talk about because the location node is essentially the same thing as the transform node. It contains the position of the x, y and z coordinates of our object in the 3D world. However, this is essentially the same thing as the uh, rotate node where it's going to directly move it from one position to another with no transition between the two. From one frame it's going to be one angle and the next one it's going to be in a completely different position. But to get around that to make a smooth uh, movement, for example a player walking, you don't want it to teleport from one location to the other. You want it to gradually go from that location to a different one. So to do that we use the translate node essentially the translate object node. By plugging this into the keyboard node you're able to move the player on a specific angle when a key is pressed and that is essentially just player movement. As you can see right here when I press space the player moves forwards. And that is basically the most important node that I have to offer. However, there is one last node I want to show you which isn't part of this category but I find it's very useful to be used with all these action nodes. If I go ahead and grab for example the set object or the rotate node and plug it into the translate node and then play that, you'll notice that the object is translated and rotated as soon as our keyboard is pressed and it gives it this pretty weird effect. However, if I want these to happen separately, I need to use one last node, basically going to sleep our node tree for a little while. And that is essentially the name of the node, it's called sleep, right here. If we plug it in between both the translate object node and the rotate object node, it's going to essentially stop these nodes, these actions, from being executed at the same time because all our logic nodes are executed in a linear fashion. It's going to trigger the, the event first of all, then it's going to travel down that node and it's going to look at what is attached to it, which is a translate object node. It's going to get that value and it's going to start translating the object and then now it's going to go out and it's going to look at the next node and if we didn't have a sleep node, the next node would have been the rotate object and that value is of 12. So it will start rotating the object as well as moving it at the same time. However, with a sleep node, we're basically telling the uh, program to look at all these nodes, and then as soon as you read that one, stop looking for a bit, and just take a breather, just relax. If we set it to one second, it's going to wait a second, then it's going to continue looking at what is attached, and in this case it's the rotate node. So if we look at what that gives us, you'll notice that it could be very useful in a lot of cases. There we go. I pressed, I wait one second and it starts rotating and I haven't pressed it again. And that is essentially how you can pile up different, um, different actions and different logic nodes to build out something very unique. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to hear more beginner tutorials or you have a question then you can just go down to the comment section and I'll be happy to help if I can. And until then, thank you very much for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next video.